so hi everyone today we will be discussing about cag that is cash augmented generation which is an improved version of the rag framework which helps you to talk to your external documents using llm and which is blazing fast so basically it involves caching of the key value pairs from a transformer attention mechanism that you might be knowing if not we will be discussing that in quite some detail today so let's get started cash augmented generation is uh, creating quite a buzz right now because it is quite fast than rag framework and requires minor mechanism changes so let's get started let's understand how cash augmented generation works so it is a framework that leverages the extended context capabilities of llms to preload all the relevant knowledge or documents in the model context window so what does it do uh, in case of rag framework if you know you have create a vector database you query on the vector database some relevant answers are generated then they are fed to the llm the llm reforms the entire answer and puts it back to the user now in case of cache augmented generation there is no such thing as a vector database required also so that's the best part so what it does it loads the entire document in one go and then creates a key value cache so i will be jumping on to it in quite detail just for now let's have an introduction now why how does this is important it eliminates the need of real time retrieval so whenever you do a query on your documents now you don't need to retrieve anything from any vector database eventually automatically it is preloaded in the llm's memory and then answers are generated so it saves a lot of time there is no dynamic retrieval going on in as in case of rag cag preprocesses and preloads the entire knowledge base in the model allowing it to generate response directly from the cached context this is great so let's try to understand how cag works then i will be showing you a couple of pictures to understand the difference as well between rag framework and cag framework this is a little technical so you need to pay attention so first of all preloading of the knowledge happens this is meant as loading the entire database that you have be it the pdf file or the text file it involves generating embeddings and tokens of the database that we have we are loading it all at once then we compute the kv cache now uh, to understand the kv cache you need to visit back to attention so if you have uh, studied about attention in quite detail you might be remembering that there are three matrices in attention key value and query if you don't remember you can check out our previous video on transformers explanation you should be able to understand it better so in case of key value query whenever you run a transformer for generating one token at a time as how llms work all the three matrices are used so it is a repeated process so once you generate one word key value and query are generated and then the final attention mechanism is generated for that word now you're generating the second word again key value query would be generated so it is a repeated task now in case of cag they would be pre computing the key value for the entire document and only the query key would be generated while we run it so hence we are saving on the power for kv so this is called as a kv cache that we will generate and then we will store it somewhere this kv cache encapsulates the model's understanding of the preloaded document allowing it to skip reprocessing during the inference so in a traditional rag system kv queue all the three keys are generated always for all the tokens but in case of cag only the q matrix would be used to generate the query key k and v would be pre loaded using the kv cache storing the kv cache as i already said saved in the memory or the disk for future use inferencing from cached context during inferencing the model loads the pre computed kv cache along the user query the model uses the cache context to generate responses without additional retrieval and in case of reset the cache can be resetted by truncating unnecessary tokens so before we jump on to the easier explanation let's see a diagram to understand it better so this is a diagram that the team has shared about rag and cag so this is uh, the first one is the rag framework so here you can see that whenever you are doing a query so assume that this is the first question this follow my cursor and this is the second question a1 and a2 now when you generating answer a1 you need to calculate k you need to calculate q you need to calculate v similarly when you are running for answer 2 you are, you are again calculating k you are again calculating v you are again calculating q now this is a repeated process now you have understood so what we are doing here in case of the second case that is cag there is a knowledge cache that we call it that is the kv cache which it has pre computed k values and v values 
so only the q value is calculated again and again so q value is calculated appended and then answer a is generated now once you input question 2 again answer 2 is generated so this particular phrase where we are recalculating key value and pair that is getting skipped so that's the best part so let's understand how a traditional rag works uh, in uh, considering the concept of kv and q so user does a query retrieves relevant documents from vector db this is how it works you create a vector db beforehand and once the user makes a query you retrieve relevant information from vector db pass retrieved documents plus query to the llm now so whatever information has been retrieved and the question you pass all the context to the llm the llm computes keys values and queries dynamically it, it calculates these three values and generate answer using self attention so these are the three important features used in self attention you need to read a little about attention and returns the answer to the user so this particular step is repeated now let's understand how cag works preloads and tie document to the llm the llm computes keys and values for all tokens in document uh, in one go and then saves it as kv cache now once the user query comes in it preloads it uses the kv cache that is generated and just generates query so in case of if you remember the diagram by rag we were generating key value and query three tokens now we are generating just q and then lm generates answer using the pre-computed kv cache for self attention so we are skipping on the calculation of key and value let's understand so let's understand cag in simpler terms if you haven't still got it we first of all gather all the information you need assume cag is preparing for a big exam instead of looking up for answers in a textbook so you won't be running through your entire textbook uh, one day before the exam right you will try to uh, study all the information before that day turn the information into a cheat sheet now instead of flipping through the entire folder every time you need to answer you create a cheat sheet so out of entire document you sort of created a summarized version store the cheat sheet somewhere else once the cheat sheet is ready you save it somewhere else to access cheat sheet here is relevant is and is synonymous to the kv cache answer questions using the cheat sheet and reset the cheat sheet when required so this is how CAG is different from RAG. I hope you would be able to understand the difference. It took me some time to understand, but now I think I am also clear. Talking about the advantages, there are many advantages as you can see. Reduce inference time. As in real time, we are not calculating key and value. It saves a lot of time. Unified context. When you have preloaded the entire knowledge base in the LLM, we ensure that the LLM has a holistic understanding of the document. Right. In case of RAG, what happens? Only the relevant elements from the vector db are passed to the llm hence it doesn't have the entire understanding of the document quite simplified architecture uh, it removes the need of integrating vector databases so i think that's the best part elimination of retrieval errors as people are saying as mentioned in the paper itself cag does reduces retrieval errors also because there is no real-time retrieval happening you can fine-tune your kv cache and then finally once you feel that kv cache is great i think any retrieval would be great it's more efficient and it is more scalable also. So I hope you are able to understand CAG now. The paper is out. I haven't seen any libraries implemented on it uh, right now. But you can just go through the paper, have a better understanding and let us know uh, how would you use CAG now. Thank you so much.